Hey there, Cousin here, and welcome back to Always Doing. Today I have the Briggs book tag for you guys. This is based on the Myers-Briggs personality classification, and there's been a lot of talk. It's not all that scientific necessarily, but it is interesting, and it's a way to classify people into, I think it's 16 different groups. And the interesting thing about this tag is it gives you one question for each element of your um, classification, and there's four letters in that, and then one question that's related specifically for your personality type. So you can watch this tag several times and be seeing new questions each time, and I think it's so genius. The original tag is by Jaded Reader. I'll have a link to it down below. I'm not even sure where I first saw it, but I love it, so let's just get into it. My personality type is ENFJ, and we're going to break it down into the four parts, starting with E, which is for extrovert. I know, I'm an extrovert who loves books. Who would have thunk it? It's so rare, I think, in the bookish community. If you're an extrovert, give me a shout down below because there's not so many of us here. We don't mean to scare any introverts, but yeah, just if there's any, let me know. The question for extrovert is, being alone has its perks, but what's the point of a good book if it can't be shared? Name three favorite books that you would like everyone to read and talk about. First, is Science Preceding the End of the World by Yuri Herrera, translated by Lisa Dillman. This is a book about Makina, who is a Mexican, she is a teenager who crosses the border into America for reasons. And it's a slim book and it is so beautifully written. It is like an onion. There are different layers that you can pull back as you read of themes and the plot also keeps you involved. And Makina is kick-ass. She is an amazing young woman and it's oh, so good. And after reading and loving the book, I got to the translator's note at the end and I truly respect Dillman as a translator. She talked about certain linguistic issues that she had while translating, and it made me realize how many of the words were so purposefully chosen and the nuances behind them that maybe I didn't catch the first time through, and it made me want to go back and immediately restart the book. I know it will stand up to many rereadings, and that's one of the reasons why I would like other people to read it, and then we can all gab about it. The second book is Noteworthy by Riley Redgate. This is contemporary YA fiction. It's about a girl, Jordan, who's going to a rather large boarding school for the performing arts, and she is an anomaly in that she has a very low voice, enough to be called an alto too, which makes it hard for her to get spots and plays because no one writes parts for somebody whose voice is that low. So she's having trouble fitting in to the part of the school she wants to fit in, which is theater. After being refused for a part yet again, she notices that the all-male a cappella group on campus is auditioning for new members, and her vocal range is basically that of a tenor. So she dresses up as a guy and goes to the audition and gets the part. The thing about cross-dressing books like this is that they can be done so wrong, but Redgate takes so much care talking how some people dress as a gender other than the one they were assigned at birth for different reasons than she is. And it goes through her talking, thinking about her gender identity and her sexuality and passing as a boy in this group. There's just the, you know, group of friends, found family dynamic, and so many good things, including a great plot and just a lot of fun. I mean, how can you have a novel about an acapella group that isn't fun? I really recommend it. The third book I have that I would like everyone to read is Why God is a Woman by Nin Andrews. I first heard about this over on Jen Campbell's channel, and if you don't know about her, do check her out. She talks a lot about poetry and literary fiction. This book is prose poetry, and the way she described it is that if you think of a novel as a movie, you know, it has a plot, it goes from A through B to C, Prose poetry is more like an art gallery, and each poem is a painting on the wall. They all are connected in a way to have a theme or reach for an idea, but each work also stands on its own. It's a fantastical story about an island where women rule, and they have come from the sea, if I remember correctly, and men have come from the sky and have angels' wings, and all of the gender roles are swapped. 
and it could be made into a really crude satire, but she reaches deep to explain why thinking one gender is better than the other one is ridiculous, as well as why the gender binary in and of itself is ridiculous. I loved it when I read it, it stuck with me. So that's the third book I would recommend for everyone to read. Oh no, I didn't think of this. Deeply meaningful, Er. The next question is for N, intuition. Some books are meant to be understood and others to be explored. What book or character stands for an idea that is deeply meaningful for you? I'm going with Garrett from Hello Stranger by Lisa Kleypas. Garrett is based on the first woman doctor in England. She actually had to train in France because no medical school in England would accept her. And she sets up a practice and part of it is giving care to those who are sick and needy and they live in a not good part of town. And it's not safe for a woman, and think this is in 1870s, for her to be going down there alone. So instead of giving up on the idea, she takes self-defense classes and learns how to use a staff. And so she can knock out any guy that tries to attack her, which is pretty cool. That's not the reason I'm picking this book though. It's for the relationship because she meets Ethan and Ethan never tries to change her, doesn't try to limit what she does, and it's the idea that, and he's a spy, so neither one gets in the way of the other person. They don't, neither one brings the other person down or dampens their ambitions, but they lift each other up. And to me, that's the ideal of a great relationship, is that you become more of yourself when you're with the other person. You're not necessarily sacrificing huge and important parts of yourself in order to be with them. And that's an idea that's very important to me. The question for F, which is feeling, is not everything needs to be realistic, but what's the fun of a world without limits? Which fantasy world do you find so atmospheric that you want to slip in and never leave? A lot of the fantasy worlds I read have bad shit happening, but one that I would like to visit is the Mercy Thompson series world. The first book is Moon Called. It's by Patricia Briggs. It's an urban fantasy. There is a touch of romance, but there are werewolves and shapeshifters and fae and vampires. And the particular reason I'd want to visit this world as opposed to many of the other paranormally type worlds is that it's mostly, at least as far as I've read in the series, contained. You can live a normal life out of danger if you like, but I could also have Mercy Thompson as a friend, which would be pretty cool. And I always liked the vampire, was it Stefan or St Stephen Stefan? The vampire character just seems like a cool guy. I've been rooting for him. I have to read more of these books. Anyway, Mercy Thompson series. And the question for the last part of my personality is J, judging. All play and no work leads to chaotic disorder and anarchy. How do you structure and balance your reading, booktube, and personal life to better use your time? I'm still new to booktube, so I don't know if I've figured out the perfect way for it to fit in my life just yet, but what has worked so far is to put things where they fit best. For example, this morning, I'm free, so I'm bulk filming videos. Later in the week, when I have an hour or two free in the evenings, that's when I'll edit them. And reading fits in all kinds of little places. On my commute, which is not insignificant, I have hour commutes many days, or right before bed, waking up in the morning, during my bath, that's when I end up reading. And personal life are the other islands through there that I work all of this around. So that's the way it's working now. Ask me again in a year. We'll see how this goes. And the last question is for your specific personality type and being ENFJ, that makes me, here they call it the giver. I've heard other names for it as well. A giver with so much to give and you'd give it to everyone if you could. What book do you believe to be universally good? A book that you could give to two opposites and then you could watch them unite in this universal good. Harry Potter. Well, of course, Harry Potter, but that's not a recommendation. I'm going to go with Kindred by Octavia Butler. I read this book for, it was like a Dewey's readathon, maybe two Deweys ago, or 24 and 48, that's what it was. And blew through it, loved it. And when I looked at my Goodreads, I don't think any of my friends rated it below four stars. And for most of Butler's books, I get the feeling that, oh yeah, that's good, oh yeah, that's good. I've never heard um, an ill word spoken about any of her writing. So I'm gonna go with Kindred. There we have it, my Briggs book tag. It's a little hard to say. 
I don't know if I'm a perfect fit for this personality type, but it comes pretty close. And interpreter is actually one of the professions that's recommended for it, so it can't be that far off. Are there any other extroverts out there? Anywhere? Hello? And we can't forget tagging other people. I tag Sarah at Basking in Books, Priscilla at Bookie Charm, and Robert over at Barter Hordes. If you would like, I'd love to see your videos on this. Be well, take care, thank you for watching, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!